This video presents DIY modification of an old Macaulay hard disk enclosure to fully functional 4 disk RAID storage using widely available parts and hardware. Remember, this is rather an idea than a ready-to-go set of operations. There are many similar solutions based on USB 3, SAS or SATA interface you can apply here. There are several benefits of such project. Most important is the total cost, really a fraction of an average consumer solution you can buy. The heart of our setup is a Lecom RAID controller, small enough to fit in the enclosure. Here's a brief ideogram of our project. We need to provide a DC power supply for the controller and discs, add any stable power switch and connect hard drives to the controller, as well as its LED status indicators. These are the main components we need to put in the box. And here's the workflow. Pretty heavy, huh? To open Macaulay enclosure, you need to unscrew back plate and slide out internal chassis. We have to get rid of all internal elements. Disk drive, the circuit plate, and also the original power button. All internal space is now available. You may see here some bottom plate bands we have to level, while the internal space is very tight and we're in need of every millimeter here. Internal chassis can be disassembled into two basic elements. Let's make it an old school way and use a vise to flatten surfaces of the steel bar. After flattening, bend it slightly to achieve previous straight form. Reassembly internal chassis. Now we need to provide new disc mounts. Base of them will be an aluminium plate cut to fit to internal space. In this case, form of the plate follows internal structure which allows us to use existing mounting points to screw it into the chassis. Measure desired dimensions, use a cutting tool to shape the plate and drill required holes. it's time to attach the hard drives, two for one plate. Carefully mark disc bottom mounting holes, drill the plate and mount the drives using proper 3mm bolts. Final plates should be firmly attached to the chassis. We should prepare two plates, which will hold the drives in a sandwich layout. Next is top mounting plate. It should be prepared with the same manner, utilizing existing original mounting points as well. As you may have noticed, thin aluminium plate is very cunning material, as you can cut it precisely by knife or the scissors. It allows you to form even complicated shapes with no special tools required. I always recommend having some in your workshop, as it's ideal for creating custom grips, brackets and any other handy stuff for various DIY projects. To isolate this side surface, use some crystal tape. Cover all area with the tape.
and she uses a spike tool to pierce the bolt holes. Now it's time to mount the controller module. To attach it, we need to prepare two custom spacers. I use old multimeter leads as they have an ideal diameter. Cut it to desired length and use corresponding screws. After drilling corresponding holes, module is to be screwed to the backplate via spacers. Here are presented all required drive wires. These are standard Molex power and data connectors. Let's focus on the power cables, because we need to modify them. We must prepare two pairs of serial connected power wires. Cut the Molex cables at measured point and connect them serial temporarily for fitting. Check twice whether lengths are correct, trying on the disk set. If everything is ok, solder bolt connector pairs. Isolate all solder connections using heat shrinks. This is how it should look completed. Manufacturer included original module power connector. We should hack it, as it will be incorporated into the circuit with the hard disks. Gently draw out original wires with gold pins. Prepare four additional wires of the same color. Solder an additional cable to every gold pin. Reassembly wires with connector. Finally, solder module connector to the disk power cables. You always want to know whether your storage is held. That's why RAID module has built set of indicator outputs for display and array status, and we're gonna utilize them. Although there are connectors for each single disk status, we use only two for the whole array. Green one for the power on status, and red one for the arrow. I use two 3mm 5V LEDs. LED wires should be long enough to easily connect them to the board. Indicators will be placed behind the original switch hole in the front of the case, as you will see next. Use any milky PVC package to form the window plate. I use the yogurt cup bottom here to make a circle. Attach it carefully to the back of a front plate using small amount of epoxy glue. Place the LEDs just behind the new window and form it to follow enclosure shapes. Fix it with one mount screw and piece of sticky tape. As our enclosure will feature a totally different set of back connectors, 
we need to recast the original backplate. Use clean aloe plate to cut the desired shape as a back and forth. I left one original hole unmodified because new power switch fit it almost perfectly. Using epoxy glue, mount aloe plate to the inner side. Next, cut some tiny shapes to fill the holes, then fill them all from the outside. When glue is finally set, it's time to sand it to achieve seamless plain surface. This step is time consuming, so prepare yourself for a lot of friction movements. Now we need new ESADA connector, which we attach to the back plate. Easiest way to get it is to purchase some standard PC ESADA bracket. Cut corresponding hole in the back plate, next drill two holes for mount screws. As a power source, I use solution from some old Chico disc enclosure, covering 5 and 12 DC power supply with an icon type connector and corresponding SMD female port. It requires 12 mm hole, so there is some drilling work required. After the paintwork, our new backplate looks cool and funky. Assembling our storage unit might be quite tricky, so apply yourself a dose of patience. There's very tiny space available, so arrange clean all elements, avoiding any potential wire crack. When bottom plate is attached, mount RAID controller and firmly connect all SATA cables. Prepare all wires to and from power switch to be ready for final assembly. If everything related to bottom plate is connected, repeat the steps while mounting top plate. Last step is assembly of the back plate. Solder wires to the power socket and switch circuit. Where applicable, finish the wires with elegant gold pin connectors. If required, cut some colliding ESATA port fragments. Use epoxy glue to fix the power socket and switch. Everything is ready, connect the wires, mount the back plate, and screw the bolts. Our custom storage unit is almost ready to use. Alright, let's turn it on. ST158 is a plug and play device so you don't need extra drivers to use it, but wanna have to set up it before use. When you turn on the unit configured, system reports you need to initialize it. 
but ignore it for now. Controller manufacturer provides some fancy looking but nifty utility to create and manage arrays. Picks your table right level. I recommend level 10 as it features best performance of the chip. When RAID is created, now we can initialize disk in the system utility and create a new logical volume.